The Donald Trump trial begins today in New York City on the hush money trial. According to Politico, former President Trump's criminal trial in New York begins on Monday with an immediate and fundamental challenge, selecting a jury, a jury that can fairly judge one of the most famous and polarizing figures alive. Now, the reason that, of course, Democrats are very much focused on this particular trial is because they have to do something to really harm Trump's candidacy. According to a brand new poll from the New York Times, many more Americans fondly remember the Trump years than remember the Biden years. Today, over well over 60 percent of Americans believe that that Donald Trump's handling of the economy was good. Almost 50 percent of Americans believe that Donald Trump left the country better off than he took it. More than 50 percent believe today that they liked his handling of law and order. Again, these are numbers that are significantly better than Joe Biden's. The question asked by the New York Times, do you generally remember the years that this candidate was president as mostly good years for America, mostly bad years for America, or not really good or bad? 46% of Americans say that Joe Biden's years have been mostly bad for America. Another 27% say not really good or bad. Only 25% say mostly good for America. For Donald Trump, 42% say mostly good for America. Only 33% say mostly bad for America, which means that Donald Trump has a pretty easy candidacy if all he does is just stand there and point at Joe Biden, which is why, again, they are focusing in like a laser beam on this criminal trial in New York. According to the Wall Street Journal, the case of people versus Trump is itself a mixed bag with the lowest stakes of the four prosecutions he faces. Trump would have no mandatory prison time if convicted. Despite the salacious backstory, the case at its core is about documents, whether Trump falsified business and financial records accounting for hush money. The political fallout could theoretically be severe. Some voters show that they would change their votes, but it could also be met with a shrug. And this particular case is incredibly stupid, and it does look as though it is a political prosecution. Of all the cases against Trump, this is the one that most looks like a political prosecution at this point. So media are going to focus a lot on this trial. I'm not sure that that is going to work, because again, the world seems to be in flames thanks to Joe Biden's absolutely awful presidency. The people of Israel are once again under attack. Over the weekend, the Islamic Republic of Iran launched a wave of suicide drones followed by ballistic and cruise missiles at Israel. The situation in northern Israel has been tense for months. Tens of thousands of people are not living in their homes thanks to Iran-backed Hezbollah terrorists operating out of Lebanon. Now the situation is coming to a head. Israel needs your prayers and your support now more than ever. The entry of Iran into the war is a serious development. It means Israel could be fighting with Hamas terrorists in the south, Iran-backed Hezbollah in the north, and Iran itself which has military capabilities beyond either Hamas or Hezbollah. The International Fellowship of Christians and Jews has been responding to Israel's emergency needs during the war by supplying protective gear for first responders, emergency supply kits, bomb shelters, reinforced ambulances, and other critical needs in northern Israel. They're on the ground right now preparing to protect civilian populations with mobile bomb shelters, food, and other basic necessities. Please, I urge you, give as generously as you can. Israel needs our help. To give to the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews, visit benforthefellowship.org. Again, that's benforthefellowship.org. God bless and thank you, benforthefellowship.org. Donald Trump was speaking out over the weekend as well. He, uh, he put out a statement on Truth Social, correctly saying that this never would have happened if he were president, which of course is true. And then he pointed out that Joe Biden is in fact showing tremendous weakness. Here he was at a rally in Pennsylvania. Before going any further, I want to say God bless the people of Israel. They're under attack right now. That's that's because we show great weakness. This would not happen. The weakness that we've shown is unbelievable, and it would not have happened if we were in office. You know that. They know that. Everybody knows that. He is obviously exactly correct about this. Senator Marco Rubio, he points out that Joe Biden leaked his conversation with Benjamin Netanyahu to the press in which he told Netanyahu to stand down and back away. He says the only reason to do that is please your pro-Hamas base. There is a second reason, which is to signal to Iran that the United States is holding Israel's chain. Here is Marco Rubio. I think we go from that to the other extreme, which is Joe Biden telling Netanyahu, take the win, don't do anything. And then his people leaking it to the media, leaking it to the press. And what it sets up is they know that Israel's going to respond. 
They know this for a fact. So why would the White House leak it? There's only one reason they leaked that. And that is that so when Israel does respond, the White House can say, we told them not to do it. And at least somehow, in some way, appease these so-called peace activists, by the way, these so ceasefire now people who were out yesterday cheering the launch of hundreds of rockets and drones and missiles against Israel. People that are out there cheering military attacks of this scale and scope are not peace activists. These are anti-Semites, anti-Israel, pro-terrorist elements out there. Rubio, of course, is exactly right about all of this. Okay, so where does this leave Israel right now? So Israel has suggested that they're going to exact a price when the time is right. So first of all, a few things to understand about Israel's response here. What is amazing is the media and the Biden administration have been so focused on painting the prime minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, as some sort of wild-eyed extremist desperate for conflict that they are completely misreading the room. Netanyahu, according to virtually every Israeli, right, left, and center, is at best an incrementalist. The big rap on Bibi is that Bibi didn't do enough to stop Hezbollah from gaining 200,000 missiles. The big rap on Bibi is that Bibi did not do enough to hamper the rise of Hamas. The big rap on Bibi is that he has been talking about taking out the Iranian nuclear facilities for legitimately decades and has not done it. The rap on Bibi, in other words, is that he moves too slow and he is too incremental. And yet the United States and the media keep saying, well, I hope Israel has restraint because that wild-eyed crazy person, Bibi Netanyahu, is going to get Israel into a regional war. Okay, that's not true. That is certainly not, Piers Morgan suggested. He says, Israel must show restraint. I fear Netanyahu won't. I have a question. Why? What sort of restraint exactly? I mean, Israel's not gonna, Israel does have nuclear weapons. They're not going to nuke Tehran. Israel does have the military capacity to seriously degrade Iranian nuclear capacity itself. The oil refineries over in Iran, unlikely they do that as well. Again, this, this kind of bizarre notion that you call for restraint on the state that was just attacked by an Islamic terror state is totally insane to me and immoral at a deep root level. So Naftali Bennett, who's the former prime minister of Israel, he put out a tweet thread explaining what he thinks is the situation. Here's what he said. He said, contrary to what pundits are saying, this wasn't designed merely as a bells and whistles with no damage. When you shoot, when you shoot 350 flying objects timed to hit Israel at the same moment, when you use three fundamentally different weapon types, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, and UAVs, you are looking to penetrate Israel's defenses and kill Israelis. The U.S. administration is telling us this is a victory. You've already won by thwarting the missiles. No need for further action. No, it is not a victory. Yes, it's a remarkable success of Israel's air defense systems, but it's not a victory. When a bully tries to hit you 350 times and only succeeds at seven, you have not won. You don't win wars just by intercepting your enemy's hits, nor do you deter it. Your enemy will just try harder with more and better weapons the next time. How do you deter? By exacting a deeply painful price. Third, it is incorrect to say nobody got hurt. There's a seven-year-old Israeli Arab girl called Amina al Hasuni fighting for her life. That is who Khamenei hit. The Islamic Republic of Iran made a big mistake for the past 30 years. It's been wreaking havoc on the region through its proxies. A terror octopus whose head, in te whose head is in Tehran. Its tentacles are in Lebanon, Yemen, Iraq, Syria, and Gaza. How convenient. The mullahs sent to others to conduct horrendous terror attacks and die for them, other people's blood. Israel's strategic mistake for the past 30 years was to play along this strategy. We always fought the octopus's arms, but hardly ever exacted a price from the Iranian head. This should change now. Hezbollah or Hamas shoots a rocket at Israel. Tehran should pay the price. The enemy is the Iranian regime, not the wonderful Iranian people. Israel is fighting everybody's war in Gaza, Lebanon, Tehran. We're considered the small Satan by radical Islam. America is the big one. I'll be clear. If these crazy fanatic Islamic terrorists get away with murder by hiding among civilians, this method will be adopted by terrorists worldwide. We're not asking anyone to fight for us. We'll do the job. But we do expect our allies to have our back, especially when it's tough. And now it's tough. Be on the right side. Help us defeat these horrible and savage regimes. That is Naftali Bennett speaking on Twitter. Are you tired of the lies and the twists of the mainstream media talking points? Yeah, me too. Join me in my newest series, Fact, where I dismantle and bring truth to this tiring mainstream agenda.